On KITV4 Island News tonight, overworked, mistreated, harassed. The many problems facing female parolees in Hawaii. We couldn't live without the bus. Ridership on the bus is down on Oahu. Why? Get more buses or like have a different route that's faster. And more arrests in Kelailoa overnight after more protests against construction of another wind farm in Kahuku. Now, from Honolulu, for all of Hawaii, this is KITV4 Island News. The transition back from prison to society can be a tough one, especially for women. I'm Tom George, and for Brenton Awa tonight. And I'm Annalisa Burgos. Aloha, everyone. Many end up back behind bars, contributing to Hawaii's 50% rate of reoffending. KITV4's Paul Drews discovers some of the additional difficulties women may face once they are freed. Paul. Well, Tom and Annalisa, they paid their debt to society, but some parolees and those who work with them say ex-convicts continue to pay a much higher price long after they leave prison. The question then was, well, how do you not lose yourself in the relationship? Like many of the classes at the Women in Needs Center in IA, the talk is focused on helping women deal with the challenges as they re-enter society. From dealing with substance abuse to preparing for employment, there is a list of requirements parolees have to fulfill in order to stay out of prison. Work is a big one, as many women need money to pay bills and restitution. So some settle for any job they can get or allow employers to take advantage of them. And sometimes it's a very low paying job. They're sometimes abused and overworked and they don't want to quit because that's all they can get. There was sexual harassment, several incidents of sexual harassment. Um, we all know any, call, any phone call to the parole officer, we most likely will be returned to prison. Now, according to Mary, Women in Need spends much of the time advocating for parolees as they navigate the challenges of work, personal life, and the numerous requirements needed to not only stay out of prison, but actually thrive in society. Susan Shaw, who spent eight years in prison for fraud and other felony charges, said she went back to prison because she rejected an employer's unwanted advances after getting a job while on parole. And we'll hear more from her tonight at 6. Reporting from the newsroom, Paul Drews, KITV4 Island News. All right, thanks, Paul. Well, new at 5, a sting operation on Kauai ends with three people arrested over the weekend for trying to solicit sex from a minor. Uh, through Operation Keiki Shield, law enforcement officers pose as children to target online predators. The Hawaii Attorney General says the fastest time from the time that the solic solicitation was made to when the suspect actually showed up at a meeting spot was just 25 minutes. Law enforcement agencies encouraging parents and teachers to talk to Keiki about the dangers of chat rooms and social media. Saving these children and keeping these, these predators off the street, um, I think can contribute to making sure that later in life, um, children don't fall prey to other uh, types of sex crimes like um, human trafficking, which is also a big um, focus of, of what we do as a law enforcement uh, team here. And some tips from police for parents on how you can keep your kids safe. Install security settings on your child's social media accounts. That way you can limit the risk of exposure to predators. And new tonight, weekend storms have triggered several brown water advisories across Kauai. Those include Hanalei Bay, Nawiliwili Bay, 
Anahola Bay on Kauai and Wailua Kapa. The public is urged to stay out of the water because stormwater runoff entered the ocean. Not all areas may be impacted, but officials remind the public if the water is brown, stay out. Let's take a live look now outside tonight. A mix of sun and clouds here on the south shore. Yeah, but some heavy rains for some other spots around the islands. KITV4's uh, meteorologist Pete Caggiano tracking the flood advisories. And even if it's not flooding, it has been pretty humid the past it, couple days. It certainly sure. has. We've had that high humidity. Unfortunately, that's going to linger over the next day at least. And some spots, while we're not seeing the rainfall here in, in town on the south shore, some locations are seeing some heavy rain. So let's go ahead and kind of take a, a wide view. The entire state's under a flood watch. We have the heaviest rain right now just north of Molokai. So that's where we're seeing some intense thunderstorms. That is going to stay offshore, but you know what? You could see some of that lightning. So if you look off to the north, it is quite the thunderstorm just offshore. Down towards the Big Island, that's where we have some rain actually on shore. So flash flood watch is in effect for the entire island chain until 6 a.m., but we have a flood advisory, meaning the rain is happening right now, and that is for the Kona side. So we'll take you into it. You can see Malka areas seeing some rainfall just Malco of Kailua Kona we've got some scattered showers there flood advisor again in effect we'll take you up towards Waikoloa Village seeing rainfall right now and just uh, south of you kind of near 190 some very heavy rain coming down over two inches per hour coming up we'll track this flash flood watch let you know how long the rain threat will linger that's coming up a little bit later we're going to toss it back to the news desk <laughs> Honolulu police arrested 18 people in Kailailoa overnight for blocking transport access for a controversial Kahuku wind farm project. <laughs> Well, last night's arrests bring the total number of people arrested to 179. That's since October 13th. All 18 were released after posting bail ranging between $100 and $1,000. The scene near the base yard where the Napua Makani Wind Farm Project's materials are being held, a little different last night. After allegations of excessive police force last week, AES Hawaii put up barriers and fencing, it says, to protect demonstrators, the police, and the transport team. I am missing my family, though, uh, my extended family. I haven't been to, you know, much parties or much family events. Um, but they all understand this is very important to me. And um, me as a Kanaka, I have to stand up for my people when they need me the most now. I think some have, you know, have risen up and some have said things, but our, our government isn't listening. So if it takes for me to lie in the middle of a street attached to other Kia'i, some people I never ever met, and my father on my right side, that's, that's what I'm willing to do. Well, of those arrested last night, 17 were for disobeying a police officer. One was for obstructing government operations. And that eight turbine project will be located in Kahuku. One of those uh, turbines already up and community members claim that they're just too close to homes and schools and that they'll have adverse health effects. AES Hawaii says the minimum distance from the property lines based on a city and county of Honolulu ordinance was 568 feet. But after listening to the community, they decided to relocate the closest turbine to 1700 feet away from the nearest property line. And stay with KITV for Island News for the latest on wind farm worries. You can read and watch all of our stories on this on our website at KITV.com. And of course, you can also download our free mobile app to make sure you get the latest updates. And uh, Tom, you know, we know the bus is an icon here on Oahu. Numbers from the city actually show, though, that there are less people riding the bus than four years ago. Yes, yeah, so what does all that mean? Well, to stop the decline, the city is betting on some technology upgrades to try and keep people riding the bus. And KTV4's Eddie Dowd joining us live from the Alapai Transit Center tonight with details on the new push to stop the drop. Eddie, what are they doing? You know, Tom, one of the things they are trying is a card like this. You load credits on it, and when you go on the bus, all you have to do is tap it to a device as you're getting on, and that pays for your ride. It's one of the things they're betting on that will help keep their customers happy. Now, since 2015, the city is seeing less people riding the bus. Honolulu Mayor Kirk Caldwell calls it a product of competition. He says ride-sharing apps like Lyft and Uber have given people more ways to get around 
He also points to the rise of Beaky that lets people rent a bike. Another concern brought up by, time, by riders is time. The mayor says they are working to reduce how long the commute takes. Some of our buses, we, we have large buses going into the backs of neighborhoods, perhaps smaller buses, more fuel-efficient buses. I'm going there and redeploying some of our larger buses where they're really needed. The rider decline has not yet had a major impact on the bus budget because the mayor says most of it is subsidized. Now, that card is already in effect right now, but the next thing they want to do is something being seen in cities like Boston and New York. You can use uh, something we all have around us, our smartphones, and that will let you get on the bus without any cards or money. Coming up at 6, we talk to riders and see what they want to see happen to change the way the bus works. Reporting live, Eddie Dowd, KITV4, Island News. All right, thanks, Eddie. Well, Hawaii's October unemployment rate is remaining stagnant at 2.7% for the third consecutive month now. Statewide, more than 643,000 people were unemployed and just under 1,800 were unemployed. Uh, under, uh, over the year, jobs increased by 5,600. The national unemployment rate was 3.6% last month. Police are looking for a missing teen on the Big Island. 15-year-old Macy Asui Mendoza was last seen in Hawaiian Paradise Park on October 25th. She's described as five feet tall, about 100 pounds, with brown hair and brown eyes. Anyone with information on her whereabouts is asked to call Big Island Police. Turning out to Maui, where firefighters are investigating what caused a massive building fire at the Kula Agriculture Park. That fire started Sunday night around 8, and it took crews nearly four hours to put it out. Several engines responded, inclu including hazmat. The structure housed farm materials and equipment. No reports right now of any injuries. And over on the Big Island, firefighters are working to find out what caused a home to go up in flames on Sunday. The fire happened on Pukeava Circle in Volcano. The fire department says they had to break through the back windows where they found a pile of furniture on fire. No injuries have been reported. Damage is estimated at nearly $57,000. And HFD has opened an arson investigation. And also on the Big Island, the Coast Guard has suspended the search for a missing 40-year-old man. Officials say the man was picking opihi with a friend near Honoka'a when they were swept by waves on Thursday. His friend was able to swim, out, uh, swim to safety and was rescued from the bottom of a 60-foot cliff, but that missing man was last seen wearing a red long sleeve shirt with camouflage pants and a black backpack. Anybody who has any information can call the Coast Guard. All right, well, one of Hawaii's oldest playgrounds getting a brand new look. That's right, still ahead, an inside look at the big changes planned at Kamamalu Park. Stay with us. Hawaii's Remarkable Women is brought to you by the Hawaiian Airlines Bank of Hawaii World Elite MasterCard. When I think about what really matters to me, it's the places I go, the people I love, the experiences that make me, me. That's what life's about, right? And whenever I use my card, I'm getting closer to those moments every day. Get the card that gets you closer and take advantage of this limited time offer. Visit hawaiianairlines.com. I did some early shopping this year. One for you, one for me. I love it. I got us a little something too. Yeah? Yep. One for you. And one for me. I love it. Oh, actually, that was supposed to be for me. I love it. I like red. Current eligible non-GM owners switch to GMC and get 16% below MSRP on most 2019 Acadia models. That's over 8,300 on this Acadia Denali. We are professional grade. GMC. Go where the contractors go. I live in Kapolea in the uh, Kumuiki track out there, and it takes me probably five minutes to get out here. Well, I live in Makahilo, and it took me less than 10 minutes to get down to this store. After you get past Costco, there's a mix left. Turn off the main drag and get right behind Costco gas station. Perfect place. Hardware Hawaii in Koloa, Kailua, Kapolei, Mapunapuna. Contractor's Choice. Our daughter was diagnosed with scoliosis. Lakari's right leg was shorter than the left. 
Her issues were so rare. I wanted the best treatment for my child's exact condition. That's why we chose Shriners Hospitals for Children. They're leaders in research. They develop advanced procedures. Shriners Hospitals has some of the most innovative doctors in the world. And they put all their expertise, all their love, into treating my child. Shriners Hospitals for Children. The most amazing care anywhere. Honda Days is on now. Unwrap the joy of a new Accord, the best midsize sedan in America, according to Car and Driver. That's all right. You're watching KITV4 Island News. Welcome back. Well, new at five, one of Hawaii's oldest playgrounds getting a new makeover thanks to a partnership with the city and county of Honolulu. In an agreement, the YMCA will fund projects to revitalize Kamamalu Neighborhood Park. You're taking a look right there at the rendering of the future improvements. Some of the new amenities coming to the park include a comfort station, some security lights, and some improved landscaping. The Y will also be turning the basketball court into a new metered parking lot. We're in the heart of Honolulu. Uh, it's pretty darn close to the high rises, the downtown office buildings, and other types of uh, use here and if it was not metered our concern is it'd be taken over by those who work in town or just come park here instead of paying to park in the high-rise office buildings they'll park here and walk some big changes there and under the under that agreement the ymca will maintain and run that comfort station and they'll hold volunteer cleanup efforts at the park this project is estimated to cost 1.7 million dollars and news out of the Ninth Island now, presidential candidate Bernie Sanders is weighing in on Hawaiian Airlines flight attendants fight for a new contract. Flight attendant Leah uh, Sakimoto presented Sanders with a lay at a Las Vegas town hall. Sanders responded by sharing support for the flight attendants, saying that Hawaiian Airlines has seen record profits and that, quote, I proudly stand with the flight attendants fighting for a fair contract, end quote. And in Washington, the House is getting ready for another round of testimonies into President Donald Trump's impeachment inquiry. And now Trump is considering testifying himself, tweeting he liked an idea that came from House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. ABC's Mona Kosar Abdi explains. In a surprising President, twist, President, President Trump says he's entertaining praise. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's offer that she made on CBS for the president to testify in the impeachment inquiry against him. The president could come right before the committee and talk, speak all the truth that he wants, or he could do it in writing. Trump responding on Twitter, quote, she also said I could do it in writing. Even though I did nothing wrong, I like the idea and will in order to get Congress focused again, strongly consider it. The president's tweet comes as eight more witnesses are set to publicly testify over the next three days. Democrats particularly preparing to press EU Ambassador Gordon Sondland on his closed-door testimony, which has now come under scrutiny. Mr. Sondland has to decide whether his primary loyalty is to America or whether his primary loyalty is to the president of the United States. Two weeks ago, the Trump mega-donor revised his closed-door testimony to confirm that he told Ukraine's leader that he would, quote, likely not receive promised military aid from the U.S. until he agreed to make a public statement concerning investigations into the Bidens and the 2016 election. And in that testimony, Sondland made no mention of a July 26 phone call that a State Department staffer testified took place between Sondland and President Trump. The top diplomat to Ukraine, Ambassador Bill Taylor, first alerted the House to the call, stating his staffer had overheard Trump inquiring about Ukraine investigations on that call. Ambassador Sondland told President Trump the Ukrainians were ready to move forward. Republicans have dismissed much of the allegations as hearsay. Where of it? No one's testified that there's been a quid pro quo. Everyone's got second, third hand, fourth hand information. On Tuesday, we will hear from four new witnesses, three of whom were on President Trump's now infamous phone call with Ukraine's leader, including former National Security Council official Tim Morrison, whom Republicans say backs President Trump's account that he did nothing wrong. Mona Kosarabdi, ABC News, Washington. All right, now the time, 5.15 p.m. Let's see how the evening rush hour is going. 
Yeah, Pete's back with an update on what's going on on the roadway. It's always, always a rough time at this time of the afternoon. <laughs> yeah, Monday this time on the H1, uh, not exactly where you want to be. But the good news is no major accidents right now as you head out to the uh, west side. Right now coming in 71 minutes from town all the way to Waianae into Waikai. Your normal slowdowns as you head through Waianae, but really not looking too bad there. And into town, slow from middle all the way into town. We'll take you out through Pearl City, Iowa. You've got solid volume right now as we head out into uh, the H1 right now. We will be looking at slow going all the way out through about the Cuneo Road area. Back in town, solid in a town through Ward. Coming up, we've got details on a flash flood watch in effect. We'll have your forecast after the break. KITV4 Island News is brought to you by Pacific Honda. Pacific Honda is your state-of-the-art dealership right on the edge of downtown. With the fully covered air-conditioned showroom, Pacific Honda offers the best prices, best service, and the best selection in new Hondas right now. Stop by and celebrate our 50th anniversary with us with a great deal on a new Honda. Take advantage of our low leasing and financing deals. Plus, come down for a test drive and a chance to win a trip for two to Las Vegas, courtesy of Vacations Hawaii. Pacific Honda, home of the happy Honda lovers. What a move, man. That was crazy, bro. Here's your chili tickets, Uncle. Oh, sweet. Thank you. <laughs> I have your autograph. <laughs> I'll put it in the bank for you. What? No. It is Marcus Mariota's autograph. We'll deposit it this way. Don't worry. Mm -hmm. Come on. OK. <laughs> First Hawaiian Bank. It all starts with yes. Baby! You need help. Uncle Andy, my car's on bus. Don't you worry, girl. I know a guy. Hey, Andy. Oh, sure. Yeah, bring her on down. I'm your guy. At Aloha Kia, everyone knows a guy. The Kia guy. Search Aloha Kia near me for exclusive deals at any Aloha Kia dealership statewide. At Aloha Kia, you know a guy. Discount Windows and Doors is having a storewide Thanksgiving sale for the entire month of November. Buy two and get one free. Yes, buy two and get one free on everything. What's on sale? Makai self-cleaning windows and doors. Hurricane-proof windows and doors. Beautiful stacking doors. All of our quality products are offered at the very best prices. We even offer a price match guarantee. Buy two, get one free this month only. Sale ends November 30th, so call or stop by our beautiful showroom in Kaneohe for incredible savings. At Cracker Barrel, we're cooking up warm feelings of home this season with country fried turkey, hand breaded, fried till crispy, and topped with holiday herbed gravy. Our take on a festive favorite is back, and it's only at Cracker Barrel. So come on home for the holidays. Come on home to Cracker Barrel. The plaza is a small community. You will definitely find a group. We play cards every day. We get to talking and forget the time. The people make it feel like home. And we're looking live right now. As we look off to the east, you can see clouds are starting to build in, and there's some rain in some of these clouds. So we're starting to see uh, things get a little bit more active as we head through our late afternoon, now evening hours. 85 degrees our current temperature. We still have our trades, but they're lighter. Those trades will be leaving us very soon. We do want to take you where we have the heaviest rain right now. That is over the big island. So flash flood watch in effect for the entire island chain until 6 a.m. That means there's potential for heavier rain. Doesn't mean it's definite. It means there's potential. When you actually have an advisory, which is in place for the big island, until 6.30 tonight, that means it's actually happening right now and we're seeing it on the Kona side. It's mainly into the, the Malka sections but some scattered light to moderate rain. The reds indicate heavy rainfall and we've been seeing that again generally Malka but uh, we've seen some scattered showers over towards Waikolo Village area. Some heavier rainfall just off of 190 right now. Some moderate showers and then some lighter showers as we head up towards a Waimea area. So some scattered rain for the Big Island. The intensity has come down quite a bit. It's kind of been hit and miss along the Hamakua coastline up through Hilo, but a few 
light showers possible there. Over towards Maui County, heavy thunderstorms, intense thunderstorms just offshore. This is lifting to the north, so it's going to miss you. We have a few areas of light rain along the windward coast. And Oahu has been pretty dry, but that could change. We, we saw just, uh, just a minute ago, we saw outside looking off to the east, those clouds building in. That's this rain right here that's starting to move towards the windward coast. So heads up through Lanikai, over towards Waimanalo, uh, Waimanalo Kailua, off towards Kaneohe. Some scattered rain that's going to be lifting off to the west. We've got some Malka showers already, but these showers be moving on shore in the next 10 to 20 minutes there. Elsewhere up towards Kaava, seeing some scattered light to moderate rain. And over towards Kauai, will finish up. Not as much rain right now, but a flood watch still in effect until 6 a.m. for you. So into tonight, we've got an upper level disturbance. Could generate some scattered rain by 3 a.m. Some rain possible here on Oahu. Then as we head towards tomorrow, still some scattered showers possible. Some of that could be a little bit on the heavier side. Surf still been up from the North Shore, 6 to 10 there, 3 to 6 for West, flat for South, and East will be building at 3 to 5. So tonight, mostly cloudy, scattered showers will be possible through the night. 72 is the low, we'll get up to 85 tomorrow, still calling it unsettled, so a mix of sun and clouds, more clouds and sunshine, and the chance for some scattered rain, just like today. We clear things out Wednesday into Thursday as our trades build back in. We'll talk more about that extended forecast and some breezy weather on the way. We'll have that coming up at 6 o'clock. You're watching KT4 Island News at 5. KITV4 Island News, sponsored by Hawaiian Electric Companies. We cherish these islands. We can all do our part to preserving the Hawaii we know. At Hawaiian Electric, we're committed to a 100% clean energy future. In collaboration with energy partners and with support from communities, we're investing in our future, creating green jobs, and reducing our carbon footprint. Working together, we'll create a greener, more sustainable Hawaii. The Hawaiian Electric Companies, empowering you. Autumn leaves are falling, and so are the prices at your Surfco Toyota dealers during the spectacular Toyota Fest. Save over $3,000 on a 2019 4Runner Off-Road Premium. Get a 2019 Tacoma Double Cab TRD Sport and save over $2,500. Or choose the 2019 Highlander LE and get over $3,400 in savings. Hurry, sale ends November 30th. The Toyota Fest is on, and only at your Surfco Toyota dealers. Spectrum Mobile is here, Hawaii, built on the nation's most reliable LTE network. Save up to 40% with an unlimited data plan. Just $45 for the first line, or choose to pay for data by the gig. Unlimited talk and text included for free. Pick a mobile plan that's right for you, and upgrade your mobile network with one design to save you money. To learn more, go to SpectrumMobile.com today. If you use hearing aids or have difficulty hearing, try the new Micro CIC with advanced smart technology. Hear more naturally with less background noise. Adjusts automatically to your listening environment. Custom designed to be small, comfortable, and fitted for your hearing needs. Hi, I'm Howard Tamashiro. Call us at Hearing Center of Hawaii so we can help to better your hearing. Hearing Center of Hawaii, conveniently located in Honolulu and Pearl Ridge. Enter to win a trip for two to a big college football championship game in Santa Clara on December 6th. All you have to do is go to any Time Supermarket or Big Save Market location, find the Miller Lite display and scan the QR code on the poster for your chance to win round trip air travel, hotel and tickets to the game at Levi Stadium. The college championship flyaway promotion is courtesy of Alaska Airlines, Time Supermarkets, Big Save Markets, Miller Lite and KITV4 Island Television. Welcome back, everybody. Now, this year, you can have a hand in making a young kid's Christmas wish come true. Yeah, the U.S. Postal Service launching Operation Santa. Here's how it works. You can adopt a low-income child's Christmas letter to jolly old St. Nick. You can pick a letter from any city in the country, and it's all tax deductible. Pretty cool. You can get all the information on USPS.com. Gifts have to be mailed out by December 20th. Good idea there. And speaking of Christmas, Santa and Mrs. Claus, they have arrived at the Sheridan Waikiki. Ooh. 
Yeah, artists uh, Jill Harris and Thomas Coat completed one sculpture, and they're currently working on a second in the hotel's lobby. The projects will use a combined total of about 33 tons of sand. Wow. Once complete, the artists will have spent 250 hours building them. They'll be on display throughout the Christmas season. And uh, But, you know, that's, that's the best we can do. No, no white Christmas. <laughs> yeah, it takes some skill to do that. Yeah, though. absolutely. Amazing. And to preserve it for how long so people can take a look at it, take some pictures. The question is how long does, you know, like people that keep their Christmas lights past New Year, how long, how long are the sand sculptures going to stay up? We <laughs> shall see. Yeah. All right, well, coming up on KATV4 Island News at 6 tonight, running one marathon, already a huge deal. Yeah, but one man is on a mission to do 26.2 miles on all the major Hawaiian islands in just one year. Those stories and much more coming up on KITV4 Island News at 6 tonight. I like to see that one. Experience the bold, crispy, mouth-watering flavors Popeye's Louisiana Kitchen is serving up in each and every bite. Providing closed captioning for KITV4 Island News. Owners of select competitive vehicles can lease the 2020 Acura RDX for $379 a month. <clears throat> and now, for the fun stuff. St. Francis Healthcare System is creating something new and exciting. The St. Francis Kupuna Village in Liliha. The former hospital campus is being transformed into a health and wellness community for seniors and their caregivers. Featuring a skilled nursing facility and an array of physicians in different specialties. With future plans for assisted living and independent living and a senior community center. Call today for more information. St. Francis Healthcare System. Creating healthy communities for Hawaii's families. Many of us celebrate the holiday season with family, food, gifts, and fun. Unfortunately, the holiday season is not so bright for many local families. E mala mana mako e kikahi ohana nele e kikala ole. E olu olu e kokua mai ai mala mako e kikahi ohana. With the Adopt a Family program, you can donate toys, household items, clothes, and or cash. Help make this holiday season special for a family in need. Right here in Hawaii. Call today. Owners of select competitive vehicles can lease the 2020 Acura RDX for $379 a month. <clears throat> and now, for the fun stuff. Burgos. On KITV4 Island News at 6 tonight, we introduce you to an Ohana who needs help, a caregiver by trade and a caregiver at home. Adopt a family here on KITV4. Diana Ko, weekends only on KITV4 Island News. Tonight, we're following two deadly shootings. The scene at another Walmart today. The chaos in the Walmart parking lot. The gunman firing at a man and woman in their car. And what happens when another man with a gun approaches the gunman? Also, the urgent hunt right now in another horrific shooting. At least four people killed, six wounded, family and friends gathered, children too. When police say the gunman got into the backyard and began firing. The verdict just in tonight, breaking news. The man accused of killing his fiance, a young mom, last seen with her daughter on Thanksgiving one year ago. The jury taking just three hours to deliberate, and tonight their verdict in. The impeachment showdown tonight, President Trump now suggesting he might answer questions in the impeachment inquiry. Critics say that is very unlikely, and tonight all eyes soon on the witnesses who were listening in on that call with the president of Ukraine, set to testify before the American people in the morning. Also late today, the passenger jet evacuated when a passenger had a backpack that was smoking. Flight attendants jumping into action. Overseas tonight, the tent standoff right now. Is it the last stand in Hong Kong? Our correspondent is there. The nor'easter here at home, moving up the east coast, rain, snow, and ice right into the northeast. We time it out. The Queen tonight standing behind Prince Andrew after what some are calling a disastrous interview about Jeffrey Epstein, saying he found Epstein's conduct unbecoming. Unbecoming. He was a sex offender. Yeah. At the heart-pounding moment tonight. Open the door! An eight-year-old girl saved from her kidnapper. This is ABC World News Tonight with David Muir. Good evening, and it's great to have you with us here as we start another week, and we are following two developing stories, two deadly shootings, the urgent hunt underway at this hour, 
and the other deadly shooting at another Walmart, this time in Oklahoma in the parking lot. The gunman targeting a man and a woman in a car, riddling the windshield with bullet holes and a bystander with a gun, approaching the suspect in the parking lot. The gunman would then turn the weapon on himself. At least nine shots fired, family members rushing to the scene. ABC's Marcus Moore is also on the scene tonight from Duncan, Oklahoma. The calls came in just before 10 o'clock this morning. I'm getting several reports of shots fired at Walmart parking lot. Police racing to this Walmart 80 miles south of Oklahoma City. This is a very sad tale that's unfolding here in Duncan, Oklahoma. Schools placed on lockdown. We know that two people were inside of this red car you're seeing right here with the bullet holes in the windshield. Three people, including the alleged shooter, dead. A handgun found at the scene. We have uh, two white males and a white female. Two of the victims are inside a vehicle. One is outside the vehicle. A witness telling station KLCO that before the gunman took his own life, an armed citizen approached the man. He told him to stop, and then after that, um, the, the shooter did stop, and then he turned the gun on himself. Police say this was an isolated incident outside the store, but the shooting comes just days after the Walmart in El Paso reopened, where a gunman killed 22 people in August. With the history in the last several years, it's, it has a lot of impact. It, it makes people very fearful. It makes people wonder what's going on. So let's get right to Marcus Moore tonight. He's live from Duncan, Oklahoma. And any word on a motive tonight, Marcus? Well, David, police are not commenting on a motive, uh, but they do say that the victims and the alleged shooter all knew each other. And tonight, investigators are looking at surveillance images, trying to get a better picture of what happened in this parking lot. David. Marcus Moore, our thanks to you tonight. Also developing just before we came on the air, a verdict in a case that has made national headlines in Colorado, a jury finding Patrick Frazee guilty on all counts in the death of his fiancée, that young mom, Kelsey Barrett. Frazee was accused of bludgeoning Barrett to death while their one-year-old daughter was in a nearby room. Barrett was last seen with their daughter at a supermarket on Thanksgiving Day a year ago. Her body was never found. The jury taking just three hours to determine guilty on all counts. ABC's Clayton Sandell on this breaking story. He's at the courthouse tonight. Tonight, Patrick Frazee is a convicted murderer. The jury taking just three and a half hours to determine he killed his fiance, Kelsey Barrett. It was a sweet day in the sense that justice was brought to Patrick Frazee for this brutal, gruesome, senseless murder. Barrett was last seen shopping with the couple's daughter last Thanksgiving. Patrick, why don't you talk to us? In a trial that lasted just over two weeks, Frazee's former mistress, Crystal Lee, testified Frazee wanted Barrett out of his life, admitting he went to her condo, tricked her into putting on a blindfold, beat her to death with a baseball bat, then burned her body. Lee admitted she cleaned up the bloody crime scene and destroyed Barrett's phone, cutting a deal to become the prosecution's star witness. I remember that crazy. The prosecution's final witness, one of Frazee's fellow inmates in county jail, who claims Frazee asked for his help to kill all of the witnesses who were set to testify against him. Clayton Sandell with us live tonight. He's outside the courthouse. And Clayton, not only did the jury come back fast, but Frazee was also just sentenced. Yeah, David, it happened fast. Just moments ago, Frazee was sentenced to the maximum life in prison, no parole, and an additional 156 years. David. Clayton, thank you. And now to the search underway at this hour, the other deadly shooting we're following tonight, and that urgent manhunt playing out right now in California. Families and their children were gathered to watch Sunday night football when two gunmen got onto the property, into the backyard, and began firing. At least four were killed, several more shot. Mothers and their children grieving tonight and in that California community and beyond. They are searching for the suspects. Matt Gutman is there tonight. Tonight, an all-out manhunt for a hit squad that filled this Fresno street with gurneys. All units are responding. They may be having multiple victims coming. We can mess up to the back. A group of 30 family and friends watching football. Ten people were shot. Four of them would die. So they came through an unlocked gate. They walked into the backyard and began immediately firing into the crowd. Police say the group in the backyard of that watch party were unaware they were about to be gunned down. Four EMS One more en route. Police say the two gunmen were reportedly armed with semi-automatic pistols. And there were so many victims that every first responder in Fresno was called out. Inside the house itself, about 20 others, including women and children. Thankfully, the children were inside the house at the time, but they could have just as easily been injured or killed. 
What the gunman left behind was grisly and traumatizing. I had two of my officers that were covered in blood and actually had to be decontaminated. Police say it appears to have been a targeted attack in the community predominated by Southeast Asians, but that no one at the party seemed to have gang affiliations. We're coming for you. This is not going to be tolerated. David, now the surviving victims have told police that they could not identify that pair of shooters because all they saw were those muzzle flashes. Now, police have been going door to door looking for eyewitnesses or even surveillance video that could help identify those killers. So far, no leads. David. Matt Cupman on this all day for us. Matt, thank you. In the meantime, we do move on to the other news this Monday night, the impeachment showdown, televised hearings first thing in the morning, and this week, nine witnesses with a major difference. Some of these witnesses were actually listening in on that phone call between President Trump and the president of Ukraine. And one witness, the ambassador to the EU, Gordon Sondland, spoke with President Trump about what he wanted in Ukraine. It all comes as our new ABC News Ipsos poll shows 70% of Americans believe the president's request to a foreign leader to investigate a political rival is wrong. And Mary Bruce tonight on the new offer for President Trump that he might now answer questions in this impeachment inquiry himself. Skeptics say it's unlikely, and here's Mary from The Hill. Tonight, President Trump is suggesting he may take the House Speaker up on her offer to testify in the impeachment inquiry. The president could come right before the committee and talk, speak all the truth that he wants. Pelosi saying Trump could even do it in writing. The president's response, even though I did nothing wrong, I like the idea and will strongly consider it. But that seems unlikely. Trump is currently blocking White House officials from testifying, and he's attacked those who have. He should not frivolously throw out insults, but that's what he does. I think part of it is his own insecurity as an imposter. The president has dismissed the public testimony so far as hearsay, but that changes tomorrow. When Congress is set to hear from three officials who were on that call between Trump and the Ukrainian president, Jennifer Williams, a special advisor to the vice president, called it unusual and inappropriate. And Lieutenant Colonel Alexander Vindman, a top Ukraine expert on the National Security Council, told investigators, I did not think it was proper to demand that a foreign government investigate a U.S. citizen. But the most anticipated witness of the week is Gordon Sondland, the Trump mega donor turned U.S. ambassador to the EU. Sondland has already revised his testimony once, admitting he personally told the Ukrainians that if they wanted nearly $400 million in military aid, they would have to publicly commit to investigate the Bidens. Trump has tried to distance himself. Let me just tell you, I, I hardly know the gentleman. Diplomat David Holmes testified he overheard one of their phone calls from a restaurant in Kiev. Trump asking whether the Ukrainian president was going to do the investigation. Holmes says Ambassador Sondland replied that he's going to do it, adding that President Zelensky will do anything you ask him to. Do you recall having a conversation with I don't recall. No, not at all. Not even a little bit. Holmes said Sondland told him when it comes to Ukraine, Trump only cares about big stuff, big stuff that benefits the president, like the Biden investigation. Tonight, Democrats announced Holmes, too, will testify in public on Thursday. So let's get right to Mary Bruce. She's live up on the Hill to begin another week. And Mary David Holmes, as you just reported there, he'll testify Thursday. And we all know that's one day after Gordon Sondland. And Sondland is perhaps the most anticipated witness of this entire impeachment inquiry. David, Sondland has been acting as a middleman between President Trump and Ukraine. He testified that he told the Ukrainians that that military aid was contingent on them announcing these investigations. But Sondland claims he didn't know these were investigations into the Bidens. He has already revised his testimony once, though. The big question here now, will he change it again? David. We'll be watching right there with you, Mary. Thank you. ABC News will have live coverage. The hearings on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday begins tomorrow morning, 9 a.m. Eastern, right here on ABC. Meantime, President Trump's unannounced visit to Walter Reed Army Medical Center on Saturday still raising questions tonight. The White House now explaining that the president had a, quote, free weekend, so he went for a, quote, quick exam in labs, the first part of his annual physical, they say. His first two physicals since taking office were scheduled and announced. This one was not. The last physical was in February. Overseas tonight in Hong Kong, police are tightening the noose around a university campus where protesters are holed up tonight, their supplies now running out. Police firing pepper spray to try to get them to leave, arresting protesters who then escaped. The situation growing more desperate by the hour, an ABC senior foreign correspondent, Ian Panel, right there on the scene tonight. 
Tonight, the David versus Goliath battle. Some calling this the last stand in the fight between pro-democracy protesters and police now in its six months. Police firing rubber bullets, water cannon and tear gas surrounding Hong Kong's Poly University where 500 students are now trapped inside. Protesters responding with bricks, bows and arrows and Molotov cocktails. Once again, the police firing water cannon. This isn't at the Polytechnic University. That's under siege. These are the streets all around it. But now many protesters are trapped, unable or unwilling to leave. Their only way out, arrest. Overnight, those under 16 have been allowed to leave along with the injured, though it's not clear whether or not they'll still be charged, leaving just a few hundred trapped inside who also want to leave but still refuse to surrender. David? Ian Panel tonight, thank you. And from London this evening, Queen Elizabeth reportedly approving of the interview that her son Prince Andrew gave to the BBC, breaking his silence about his friendship with accused sex trafficker Jeffrey Epstein and the claims that he had sex with a teenager years ago. But many are now calling the interview a disaster. And here's Eva Pilgrim. Tonight, Prince Andrew facing growing backlash after speaking publicly for the first time about his relationship with accused sex trafficker Jeffrey Epstein. Do I regret the fact that, that, that he has quite obviously conducted himself in a manner unbecoming? Yes. Unbecoming? He was a sex offender? Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm being polite um, in the sense that he was a sex offender. The Prince telling BBC's Newsnight he has no regrets about his friendship with Epstein before he was convicted in 2008 of soliciting prostitution from a minor. But just months after Epstein's sentence ended, the Prince was seen in this video obtained by the Mail on Sunday, appearing in the doorway of Epstein's New York home. He says he came to end their friendship, but admits he stayed for four days. But you were staying at the house of yes. a convicted sex offender. It was a convenient place to stay. There is, I mean, I mean, I've gone through this in my mind so many times. At the end of the day, um, uh, um, with the benefit of all the hindsight that one could have, um, it was definitely the wrong thing to do. The prince insists he never saw any unlawful conduct involving underage girls and has no memory of the 17-year-old in that infamous photo. You don't remember meeting her? No. Virginia Roberts Dufresne says she was one of Epstein's teenage sex slaves, claiming in court filings he ordered her to have sex with Andrew on three occasions. The prince flatly denies the allegations, suggesting the photo could be a fake. I'm not one to, um, as it were, hug and um, public displays of affection are not something that, that I do. Andrew claiming he never really partied, but British media now running a string of photos showing the prince getting cozy with multiple women. This after he insisted Jufre's account was impossible. She was very specific about that night. Mm -hmm. She described dancing with you no. and you profusely sweating <laughs> and that she went on to have bath there's a, there's possibly. A, there's a slight problem with, 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 with the sweating um, because uh, I, I have a peculiar medical condition, which is that I don't sweat, um, or I didn't sweat at the time. I um, ha had suffered what I would describe as an overdose of adrenaline in the Falklands War when I was shot at. Now, the Prince did say he would be willing to cooperate and answer questions about Epstein if advised to do so by his lawyers, but says he wouldn't have much to offer because he claims to have not seen any sort of the behavior Epstein has been accused of, David. Eva Pilgrim, thank you. And tonight, the Supreme Court issuing a brief stay, halting the release of President Trump's tax returns for now. The Supreme Court issuing that stay to the president and to Congress, giving both sides 10 days to submit arguments. The lower courts have ruled the president's accountants must turn over his financial records. The president continues to appeal that decision. Much more ahead on World News Tonight this Monday. Breaking news, the passenger jet evacuated tonight. A passenger with a backpack that was smoking. Flight attendants jumping into action when they saw the smoke coming from that bag. The heart-pounding moment tonight, police banging on the door. An eight-year-old girl saved from the kidnapper who had just been taken from her mother there in the street in broad daylight. And the nor'easter moving up the east coast tonight. Rain, snow, and ice right into the northeast. And we're going to time it out for you. A lot more news ahead. I'll be right back. The flu sucks everything out of you. The fever, aches, and chills can flatten you fast.
Prescription Zofluza can help you feel better in just over two days. Over-the-counter medicines just treat symptoms. Zofluza is different. It attacks the flu virus at its source with just one dose. But your window for prescription treatment is short. Ask your doctor about Zofluza within 48 hours of your first symptoms. Zofluza treats the flu in people 12 years and older whose flu symptoms started within the last two days. Before taking Zofluza, tell your doctor if you're pregnant, nursing, and all the medications you take. Do not take Zofluza if you are allergic to Biloxivir Marboxyl or any of the ingredients in Zofluza. If you develop an allergic reaction, call your doctor immediately. The most common side effects are bronchitis, nausea, diarrhea, sinusitis, and headache. The sooner your doctor prescribes Zofluza, the sooner you can start feeling like you, not the flu. Zofluza, one dose can do it. Visit Zofluza.com to download a coupon. This is Houston, Texas, the city with the most millennials living at home. We all live together here. It's myself, my dad, and my husband, and our three dogs. We hear a lot about millennials, but did you know that more than one in four are caring for a loved one? As the years went on, she took on more and more responsibility. So how do you financially prepare for needing care one day? It's something everybody really should think about, but precious few really do. Planning for the future together, that's financial wellness. Talk to a financial advisor or start your plan now at Prudential. With my shark, I deep clean messes like this this and even this but i don't have to clean this because the self-cleaning brush roll removes hair while i clean shark the vacuum that deep cleans now cleans itself at bear we're more than a healthcare company we help farmers like john by developing digital tools so he can use less water to grow crops at bear this is why we science Next tonight, here are the dramatic images, the rescue of an eight-year-old girl who had just been kidnapped from her mother in broad daylight. Here's ABC's Chief Justice Correspondent, Pierre Thomas. Help me! Help me, please! It's every parent's worst nightmare. An eight-year-old literally snatched from her mother as they go for a walk in this Fort Worth neighborhood, all caught on this doorbell camera in May. The mom fighting for the child, pushed out of the suspect's car. One of the most disturbing things about this incident was the randomness of it. Six hours later, police called to this hotel seven miles from the abduction after a report of a suspicious man with a child. They talk their way in but leave after a brief search. The child is right there, buried under clothes in this laundry basket. Two hours later, a family friend helping police search identifies the suspect's car in the parking lot of that same hotel. Fort Worth police racing to the scene. Tactical teams force their way in. Hands! Let me see your hands! Step out here! Step out! Apprehending the suspect. But where is the child? For a few gut-wrenching moments, there's no sign of her. But then... Hey, here she is! Got her! We got her! She pops up right there in the laundry basket. David, the kidnapper was sentenced to life in prison late last week. We're told that brave little girl is doing remarkably well. She's being described as resilient. David? We're just glad she's okay, Pierre. Thank you. When we come back, the passenger plane evacuated tonight at a major airport when smoke was seen coming from a passenger's bag. And the Nor'easter moving in. We'll track it out. <laughs> Thousands of women with metastatic breast cancer, which is breast cancer that has spread to other parts of the body, are living in the moment and taking Ibrance. Ibrance with an aromatase inhibitor is for postmenopausal women or for men with HR-positive HER2-negative metastatic breast cancer as the first hormonal-based therapy. Ibrance plus letrozole significantly delayed disease progression versus letrozole and shrank tumors in over half of patients. Patients taking Ibrance can develop low white blood cell counts, which may cause serious infections that can lead to death. Ibrance may cause severe inflammation of the lungs that can lead to death. Tell your doctor right away if you have new or worsening symptoms, including trouble breathing, shortness of breath, cough, or chest pain. Before taking Ibrance, tell your doctor if you have fever, chills, or other signs of infection, liver or kidney problems, are pregnant, breastfeeding, or plan to become pregnant. Common side effects include low red blood cell and low platelet counts, infections, tiredness, nausea, sore mouth, abnormalities in liver blood tests, diarrhea, hair thinning or loss, vomiting, rash, and loss of appetite. Be good. Be in your moment. Ask your doctor about Ibrance. Come on, Clint, you can do it. Throughout the years, you've kept your best friend moving. Come on, Quinn. With Cosequin, because no other brand compares. Trust Cosequin. <laughs> 
Most homeowners draw a blank when asked what their home projects should cost. That's why at HomeAdvisor, you can see what others paid for similar jobs in your area. Start your next home project knowing what you should pay. Go to HomeAdvisor.com or download the free app. Stains can appear out of thin air, but when you get to work, magic happens. The real trick is the next one up your sleeve. We make OxyClean, you make it work. Work your magic. I am totally blind, and Non24 can throw my days and nights out of sync, keeping me from the things I love to do. Talk to your doctor and call 844-214-2424. We rent this cabin every year. Yeah, it's perfect for us. Affordable, convenient, just what we need. Like our wireless service, Consumer Cellular. We get everything we need at a really great price. Consumer Cellular offers talk, text, and data for as low as $20 a month. And they've received the J.D. Power Award for highest customer service seven times in a row. Switching was easy. We even kept our phones and numbers. And more of our money. Make the switch to Consumer Cellular. Call, go online, or find us at Target. The pistachio is a healthy snack. Excuse me. And I appreciate that in an age of unrealistic body expectations. Excuse me. On TV, magazine covers, and elevator weight sensors? Cowards! Excuse me, I'm just going to go to my car. Oh, really? W what kind of car do you drive? To the index of other news, the scare on board a southwest flight at Chicago's Midway Airport. Smoke coming from a backpack as passengers were boarding. The plane was evacuated. Flight attendants putting the backpack into a fire containment bag. Bomb squads on the scene. An overheating battery, though, could be to blame. The nor'easter moving up the coast tonight. The storm battering the Carolinas over the weekend. Waves smashing through the dunes and the outer banks. Fog and icy roads blamed for a multi-vehicle accident. This is I-64 in Augusta County, Virginia. More than 20 people hurt. Rain, snow, and ice from New York to Boston all the way up through Maine through tomorrow. And the Jeopardy dream match. After winning the Tournament of Champions, Jeopardy James will now face some famous names himself. Former champs Ken Jennings and Brad Rutter in the greatest of all time tournament. That's in January in prime time here on ABC. When we come back, you'll remember the story of Miracle the Dog, what we've learned tonight. I'm your mother-in-law, and I like to question your every move. Like this left turn. It's the next one. You always drive this slow. How did you make someone I love? That must be why you're always so late. I do not speed, and that's saving me cash with DriveWise. You know, my son, he did say that you were the safe option. And that's the nicest thing you've ever said to me. So get all state. Stop bossing. We're good drivers save 40% for avoiding mayhem like me. It's my son's favorite color. You should try it. You always drive like an old lady. You're an old lady. This is Pill Pack. It's my new pharmacy. They package my medication by the dose and deliver it right to my door. And the best part, their service is free. I only pay my co-pays. Does your pharmacy do that? Pill Pack, an Amazon company. Puberty means personal space. So sports clothes sit around growing odors. <laughs> That's why we graduated to Tide Pod Sport. Finally, something more powerful than the funk. Tide Sport removes even weak old sweat odor. It's got to be tied. Pain happens. Aleve it with Aleve PM, the only one to combine a safe sleep aid and the 12-hour pain-relieving strength of Aleve. So magic mornings happen. There's a better choice. Aleve PM. The season is here. And it's time for our best offer of the year during the Ford Black Friday event. Now, for a limited time, get 20% estimated savings on select 2019 Ford models, plus earn complimentary maintenance through Ford Pass Rewards. The Ford Black Friday event ends soon, so hurry in today. Now, get 20% estimated savings on the 2019 Ford F-150, plus earn complimentary maintenance through Ford Pass Rewards. The Black Friday event ends soon. The American people can fix anything. The problem is corporations and the people who run and own them have purchased our democracy. Here's the difference between me and the other candidates. I don't think we can fix our democracy from the inside. I don't believe Washington politicians and big corporations will let that happen. The only way we can make change happen is from the outside. For me, this comes down to whether you trust the politicians or the people. And if you say you trust the people, are you willing to stand up to the insiders and the big corporations and give the people the tools they need to fix our democracy? A national referendum, term limits, eliminating corporate money in politics, making it easy to vote. I trust the people, 
And as president, I will give you tools we need to fix our democracy. I'm Tom Steyer, and I approve this message. Here's to you, the merrymakers, the finders of unexpected, extraordinary gifts that are made and sold by real people. Here's to you, the givers. ShopEtsy.com. Tomorrow. Are you ready? Well, get ready, because Garth Brooks is taking over the morning. My kind of day. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Tomorrow only on Tell Him Garth. Good morning, America! Yeah! Oh, amen. Finally tonight here, America Strong. The American rescuers in the Bahamas after Hurricane Dorian. They discovered a dog trapped for weeks. A miracle. It was just last month here we all learned about the dog named Miracle, trapped for weeks after Hurricane Dorian ravaged the Bahamas. Oh, my God. Let's get you this. Hi, baby. Big Dog Ranch Rescue from Loxahatchee Groves, Florida, finding the dog, and you could see how thin he was. Oh, my God, baby. Look at that tail wagon. Feeding him, talking to him, 